Deanne Collins with Michael Jackson. Michael, I understand that you're a lover of animals. Is that true? It's very true. Uh, we tour in the past. We go to different countries and different states. And I go to the different zoos all over the world to see the different animals. I can relate to them a lot, a lot better than I can to humans. Like people. Yeah. Is it also true, is there a mini Michael Jackson zoo on the grounds of your house? Well, I wouldn't say zoo, but I have uh, several animals here. I'm still collecting animals. What kinds of animals? Do I have? Uh-huh. Well, I have a, a llama, which is a beautiful animal. He's, he's taller than I am. He's from Peru, South America. Yeah. And he was in the circus. His name is Louis. He's really sweet, and he loves people, and he does tricks. And I have a, a mufalon sheep. He looks just like a ram. Most people think he's a ram, but he isn't. He was also in the circus. They were raised together. His name is Mr. Tibbs. I have an um, almost six-foot uh, boa constrictor. His name is uh, Muscles, and I take him to the studio. Diana Ross was just here, and we were both peeling his skin off, you know, because he peels like three times a month. And he was great. She was a little afraid of him, but then she got relaxed with him. And uh, She touched him? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And I have two deer. Their name is Prince and Princess. They're really sweet. They're the North American white-tailed deer. And uh, I raised them from the bottle. They're really sweet. And I got several, all kinds of different birds and stuff like that. Do you have a favorite animal? Mm-hmm. Mm, probably... Louis and uh, Prince and Princess. Okay. You're considered the number one artist in the world. What's your secret, Michael? Um, just loving what I do and speaking from the heart, being honest, really. Uh, <laughs> I can't qu quite form it down to a special formula or anything. It's uh, just... Wanting to do great work, you know, and doing it. <laughs> and I guess loving what you do has a lot to do with it, too. Yeah. Caring and loving and putting your heart in your work. Honesty. Is that very important to you? Oh, yeah. Very important. Um, I mean, it's nothing like writing a song that, that, that you feel good about, like Billie Jean and Beat It and starting something, stuff like that. And you feel like you have a great prize, you know, when it's done. Okay. I work hard on them. So there, I guess you're you're talking about the honesty. I would know would be like honesty in everyday life, but you're talking about honesty in, in musical terms, being true to yourself, and trying mm -hmm. to get that out on the al album. Mm-hmm. Yes. Your audiences expect new and exciting things from you each time you release an album. Do the high standards get harder or easier to live up to? Well, they get harder because no matter what you do, it's you're competing against your uh, previous product and everybody expecting more. It's like with the motion picture, you go see Star Wars, then Empire Strike Back, you expect more than Jedi, you expect more than that. So you're really trying to top yourself all the time. And it's hard. I mean, with the BGs with Saturday Night Fever, they, and they came out with Spirits Having Flown. It's really hard, you know. But uh, I... I I believe in doing better work. As you grow, you should get better. You know, it's like that saying, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. Well, trying to top, you know, your albums, is it draining personally and physically? No, it's a challenge. It's fun. It's like a big, I shouldn't say game, but it's, it's, I have a lot of fun doing it. It's really, uh, to get paid for something you love to do is really a treat. Because a lot of people are employed and they hate their work. It's terrible. But I, I'm getting paid to do something that I love to do. So it's a lot of fun. I'm just having a ball. Now you stated that you feel more comfortable on the stage than at any other time. What do you do for excitement And once you're off that stage? Dream about the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Play with my animals, stuff like that. I don't really go many places at all. You'll never... I don't think you'd find me in the disco or the nightclub. All of those places are fun, if that's what you like to do. It's just when I go to places like that, it becomes uh, work instead of pleasure. They announce that I'm there with the loudspeakers, and they play all my records, and 
I'm signing autographs. And again, you're on stage. Yeah. Uh So it's not fun. I've done disguises and all kind of things, and it just doesn't work. But it's, you know, it's it's all right. I don't mind it. (laughs) Well, for me, to mellow out, I call it mellowing out, I read or play bed whist. For you, is it the animals again, as you're saying? Is yeah, that so? probably animals or being with children, which I love a lot. I love kids, the young ones, and uh, play with them, swim and stuff like that. You've been in the music business since age five or six. What do you think your life would, would have been like if you hadn't had the talent to sing? Well, I, I can't imagine, really. I um, I have no idea <laughs> what I'd be doing because this is seems so right for me, and I'm here to do this, and um, it's my contribution to life to do what I'm doing, and I put my heart in it, and whatever good I can do, I do it. Cause I uh, I love people, and I love making them happy. It's nothing like seeing your record number one not for the ego because I I hate ego it's for the fact that I know people bought it and they loved it and they enjoy it and that's good and I think all those people who um, I mean I can turn out great music but it takes the people behind it who are the disc jockeys and the program directors and all the independent people to really make it happen and I appreciate it so are you saying Michael Jackson age 60 still on stage um, yes, um, I'd probably be doing writing and film, probably directing and stuff like that. Still active in it, but a little more behind the scenes, developing other people and showing them which direction to go in. With success in show business, you stated earlier that your privacy is almost lost. How do you deal with going out? Have you just stopped going out altogether, or having your picture taken, or people asking for autographs? Have you found a way to beat all of that and still maintain a private life outside of, of your home? Um, well, the best privacy is kind of within yourself and to be independent at home or something. Because everything I want to do is here. Uh... I can do whatever I want here, you know. It's loose and free. If I go out somewhere, it's different. You get swarmed by lots of autographs and people. Which I don't mind signing autographs. It's fun. It's, uh, you know, it's part of the work that I do. Are you considering taking off for a few years, maybe a year? Just smell the roses. Mm. Just be totally selfish as far as taking time out from Michael Jackson with no recording, movies, or any mm. such show business related things. Do you ever do that? I'm the kind of person, if I take a week off, I feel I'm loafing and I feel like I'm getting behind. I, I like being active. I like to create. I constantly coming up with different songs and different ideas and looking and prying into the future. Uh, the sound of tomorrow and uh, cause the music is constantly changing minute by minute and uh, it's important not to become old hat which is an old expression <laughs> but some of some of your recordings are what's considered classics will they ever become old hat no because to me uh, a great melody will never become old. Most important thing is, you know, great melodies. And some of the old Motown or the old Beatles songs are just phenomenal. And they'll never become old hat. But the, the sounds and the music change, and that will become old. The sound, like the instrument. Mm-hmm. Like in the 60s, there was a lot of electric guitar and acoustic right. guitars. And now it's this whole computerized, synthesized sound, which is completely taken over. And that's the difference. But the melodies are still there, but the music has changed. Oh, I see what you're saying. You said you love kids. You mm-hmm. qualified it by saying very young kids. But what about marriage? And then maybe some kids. How far uh, down the line is it, Michael? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't answer that. <laughs> okay. I won't bother you on that. <laughs> 
Any TV specials in the work? Uh, say, something you'd like to do on television? Um, not that I know of. I get all kinds of different uh, offers all the time, from specials to my own series to doing cameos to pilots to cartoon series and all kinds of things. And I'm mainly concerned with doing movies right now. And that's what I'm interested in. What kind of movie? Uh, something that's really different and exciting. Uh, something that hasn't been seen before. I mean, it's like what Star Wars was to the whole picture industry. All of a sudden, it was a whole other look. A whole new type of movie making. The creatures that walk and right. in space instead of on Earth. And, and it's, it's kind of taking it to a whole other wave than where it is now. Is Star Wars one of your favorite movies? Yes. E.T. E.T.? <laughs> yes. All right. Call home, E.T. Yeah. <laughs> to Steven Michael. Spielberg, I think, is brilliant. Your creativity, it seems, is carried out like in all aspects of your life. In music, you're very futuristic. You're looking, you're really looking to the future and in planning for that. And even in movies, you, you want something that has never been before. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I was trying, in my mind try to think of what kind of movie would that be. Uh, it would be, I don't know. Could you sort of paint me a picture of something that would be uh, the first of its kind for movies? Um, I sure would love to do that. There's tons of, of scripts that are coming. Since I did The Wiz, there's been tons of things coming in. And with a movie, you know, it's so important to be selective, to mm -hmm. do the right vehicle that's perfect for you. And... Uh, I really enjoy surprising the public, going in a whole other direction than what they thought. And there's several different projects that I'm really interested in, but I'd really hate to say what it's about, because I really want to take a different turn and surprise people. <laughs> Not just one glimpse, and one peek. But it'll be something, guys, futuristic, in... Uh, it would be very different. That's mainly what I can say. <laughs> okay. So basically, that's the key word, different, yeah. for Michael Jackson. Yeah. You stated the Eagles as a favorite group of yours. Did the group's Hotel California inspire your Heartbreak Hotel or Thriller? No. Well, Heartbreak Hotel was a stimulant for Rod Temperton to write Thriller, because he told me how much he loved Heartbreak Hotel, with all the sounds and the falling and the sound effects and... I was trying to step into the future with that Heartbreak Hotel, trying something different, um, integrating drama and sound effects with music, and uh, it worked, because uh, a lot of people are, are trying that whole thing, like uh, Pink Floyd and even Rod Temperton with Thriller, <laughs> and so many other people are coming out with sounds in their records now different effects. It's fine. So it, it was like a, a pilot and also um, a prototype mm -hmm. of what's happening now. Mm -hmm. Has a tentative date been set for Jackson's tour with Jermaine and Janet? Well, we're um, probably some, some time after this summer, but we really, really haven't pinpointed any dates yet, so we're really not sure. And the other, as far as Janet and Jermaine are concerned, we haven't really talked about that yet. We have talked about Jermaine, but if we do, it'll be a surprise, so I can't really answer yes or no. And sometimes he's unpredictable, so he may say, well, I decide to go and uh, take it easy and rest somewhere, because he changed his mind so quickly. He uh, Last time I heard, he said he was moving on an island, which he was going to buy, and now he moved somewhere else. And then he was into boats, and then he changed. And so he's always changing. So I really can't answer for him. Do the accolades, gold and platinum records and awards still excite and inspire Michael Jackson to keep going on? They'll always um, excite me, the gold and the platinum. It's just important not to take it too serious and not to... Uh, reflect too much on the past and too much on the gold and too much because you could bog down with uh, 
with your um, with your achievements instead of pulling out great work instead of your your past work and you can get lost in that really uh, sometime I put all my gold and platinum records out and I look at them and then I try not to take it too serious because there's so much more I I have to do and kind of forget about that is it hard to forget about that though uh, the spotlight the superstardom. I mean, your name probably is up there with Muhammad Ali or higher. You're known everywhere. As you said, you can't go outside. Um, every Everybody knows Michael Jackson. Is it hard not to take yourself seriously? Mm. No, it's, pr it's pretty easy for me because... Uh so many things I block out. Uh, I so much see myself uh, like you or like the people in this room. I'm human just like you are. I'm no better than you are. I may have a certain talent with uh, my art and songwriting and dancing and the drama and the whole thing, the show business thing. But... As far as human, uh, I'm just like you. Average and so, person. Yeah, so it's no right for me to think I'm better than you or or have an ego to walk on air. Cause there are lots of people <laughs> in my field who are like that. And and most of those people, they, uh, they fall. They really do because they begin to treat people who help them badly and to forget where they came from and to forget about those who help them get where they are. And that's real important. That's why I thank all those. I thank everybody. <laughs> so in reality, you're protecting yourself from that fall by just being average and human. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe in failure, actually. So I, I just don't even think about it. I take that out completely out of my vocabulary, the word fail. So I don't believe in it. Is, is that part of the upbringing, to be goal-oriented and also not to believe or even say the word failure. Is that something you were uh, taught by your mom and dad? Well, I've been, I've been taught a lot by them. My father and my mother. How to train and to be determined and to do this and that. But it's, it's just something I strongly believe in. <laughs> okay. All right. We, we said five or six years old uh, in the business, in show business. Do you sometimes feel that you wish you could return, maybe, and and take your childhood and look at it and, and treat it a little bit differently, because basically, did you pass childhood and and did you feel you were thrust into an adult world? Um. Well, it was pretty different being brought up on stage and on tour, and it's not like the ordinary child life. So it is different. I mean, uh, that's I enjoyed doing it. It was nothing like I had uh, stage parents who shoved me into something I didn't want to do. It, it wasn't that. If it was that, I don't think I could have made it this long. I would have probably overdosed or something. <laughs> but I enjoy it. No, I. It's it's a love that I have. It's nothing like being on stage. It's, you can't put it in words. When the lights hit you, and there's a certain spirit you feel, and uh, I just don't like coming off. <laughs> twenty-four hours on stage. Uh huh. You, you take twenty-four hours on stage if you can get it. Huh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you don't regret one. Not minute. one minute. Not one minute. You've been slated to portray Peter Pan. When's the projected movie release date? Uh, that's being developed right now, and uh, that is a project I'm interested in. And uh, I've been approached by different people uh, to do the film. And uh, I haven't really said yes yet. I haven't seen the script yet. So they're going ahead, and I'm waiting. Okay. And you'll let me know, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I identify you as strictly a black musical genius. However, you have much broader appeal than that. Do you find it hard to appeal to both black 
and white audiences at the same time while performing, or do you even consider the black or white aspect? No, I, I, I don't think in terms of color or, or race, or I don't say when I write a song, this is for the blacks and this one's for the white. I just write and it comes out and I'm influenced by what I hear. And uh, it just comes out that way. I guess since I was small up to now, um, is a total sum musically of, of what I've been raised on. And um, I don't think it's in terms of color. Because I don't believe in that. I really don't. So you're saying music is colorless? It's colorless. It's for everybody. It's for the world. It's for uh, everybody to enjoy. As an entertainer, Michael, and also a superstar, you're always in the limelight, but is it hard to keep a black perspective? And this is not on a musical level, but on a, a Michael Jackson private level. Is it, is it hard to, to look back and remember your roots? No, never hard. All I have to do is look in the mirror. That's all I have to do. Or look at my hands. Okay. You have the opportunity at this point to, I guess, say anything you would like to your, your fans. Do What would you say if you have the opportunity? Well, I'd like to say, uh, it's only one word I could say, thank you and I love you. This is Michael Jackson, and you're listening to... Deanne Collins with Michael Jackson.